Hey guys. Hey, it's been a while since I talked to you. And <clears throat> we've had several trips in between uh, and the holidays. So welcome back. You know, I, I say this every time. Hope everyone's doing well. I know there's a lot going on in the world. Hope everybody had good holidays. But the thing I say all the time is, you know, I don't make these videos on a regular basis. I just make them when I have something to say and you know something that uh, can add value hopefully to you guys uh, first and foremost and you know it's again it's been a busy uh, holiday season you know get togethers a uh, few camping trips I'm gonna try and pick up where I left off from memory and that's never a good thing you know, I might mess it up but uh, for me anyways so we came back from our uh, Oregon uh, Northern California trip uh, and it went well it went really well sorry about the jiggling I'm driving I'm going to pick up my 90 year old father we spent one day a week together um, and it's it's been really nice to be able to do that so blessed enough to do that anyways stay on track with RV stuff so everything's been fine we now have the RV back in uh, Arizona that's our usual wintering you could say uh, and then we'll do one more spring trip we like to go to spring training uh, and then you know camp I'm pushing for a week but I think I'm gonna get maybe a couple days <laughs> um, I always like the longer ones because you know how it is when you uh, it doesn't matter really what you're in I know especially I can speak to trailers and fifth wheels that um, you know, it, it definitely kind of takes it out of you if you travel more than five hours to any given campground and then, you know, you just stay one night and you're, you know, either right back home or somewhere else. I mean, it's completely fine to do. I know a lot of people do it and it's fun and I prefer to stay at least two nights, you know, make it at least worthwhile, especially a long drive, uh, make the, you know, your whole camp time little more worthwhile you know leave a subject a comment below you know if you've <clears throat> you know your thoughts on that you know I, I suspect a lot of people kind of feel the same way but when we first started out that was you know a lot of times that was our only option just to stay maybe one night so um, I'm gonna do that and that's pretty much it for us the, through the summer it just in the southwest here it's so hot you know, we do have the air conditioner. It's not a problem. And if, you know, we may change our mind, but we usually just park it during the summer. Um, let it, you know, summer kind of pass. We take it easy. We do a lot of our medical then. We try and plan it for then. Um, get that all taken care of. And then we'll start back up. Our, I think our really, our favorite time to get out in RV is in the fall, really. Uh, you know, we've gotten a few times now color changes uh, as far as trees, um, foliage, whatnot. And that's, you know, the Oregon trip gave us a lot of that. So, uh, quick, you know, update on the fifth wheel. Um, the only thing recently, well, there's two things wrong. One that's been, I really need to kind of deal with, but it's none of it's a game changer. It's very low, um, I guess priority is not the right word, but it's not going to stop us from taking it out is what I'm trying to say. Um, one was a latch that uh, we were able to push back into place. It's on one of the cabinets. And for now, it seems to be holding. We didn't really glue it or anything. We thought about it, but it looked like maybe it just popped out of place. And the latch holder piece. Um, and then another one is I still need to figure out why the lights above the bed are not working um, and there's I think I know they're tied into right behind the head of the bed <laughs> um, there's a light underneath the pop out the slide out for the master bedroom well it only has one bedroom for the bedroom um, so I think it's tied in I don't know I did look under the mattress uh, you know, the storage area underneath the bed. 
uh, and I couldn't see any wiring that may have gotten jarred out when we put stuff in there for storage. I looked underneath on the carpet towards the slide, you know, from the bedroom. I couldn't see any wiring, so I'm obviously looking in the wrong spot. I think I've read that that's pretty easily pulled out somehow, you know, maybe um, we kind of inadvertently hit it, you know, uh, or it just, I know it worked when we first bought it, and at some point it just went out, so still trying to figure that one out, yeah, not a game changer, just a few lights, um, so that's it on the RV, it's doing pretty good, we're really happy with it, we've settled into it more now, we bought it in May, so you know, it's not quite a year yet, but, uh, you know, it takes a while to, especially if you're not full-timing, to kind of figure everything out and get comfortable with it. Um, so, the other thing is the, uh, and this is not major either, but the Rammer, um, you know, the 2500, if you're not familiar, maybe go back a few videos. I did one on, um, you know, top 10 towing tips, that thing, that type of thing. Uh, initially when the channel started but it's 2500 2019 um, diesel and we were coming back from uh, across the desert it was pretty windy we weren't towing and the check engine light came on and this was after we got fuel uh, about maybe I don't know five or ten minutes after we got fuel so whatever how many miles that would be it just came on and we're not sure why uh, I did some research I called um, the dealer and he said it usually if it's not flashing it's just good to know um, and ours is not if it's not flashing and something else oh the gauges are fine the gauges seem to be fine from everything I can tell um, you're, it's probably an oxygen sensor they're thinking so I got I'm gonna get it in in less than a week now and I'll give you guys an update on that as far as what it is you know uh, still under warranty so I'm assuming if it's anything major it should be covered uh, so yeah that that's an update on it other than that the check engine coming on it's been doing really good I mean we've towed a lot with it now uh, between the old trailer and the new fifth wheel um, it's got a lot of towing miles under its belt and I'm trying to maintain the maintenance um, you know it's pretty regular basis the fuel filters I'm going to do every 10,000 miles and I know some people will argue with that they may feel it's overkill um or not enough. I know. I think I've read some people get it every five thousand. It's expensive though to get the fuel filters done. Um, the oil change is expensive to boot. Um, so, and then changing the oil every five thousand, and still using the Valvoline Blue. I, you know, I've thought about other oil. Uh, for one, it's expensive for you know, like the full synthetic. You know, some people. I think they're running AMS oil. Leave a comment. If you guys are running something that's, you know, good oil that's not terribly expensive, please let us know. Please let me know. Um, I've done some research. But, so, yeah, and the warranty factor, too. So, I'm still running the Valvoline Blue. Um, then changing that out every 5,000. Matter of fact, it's coming up for another one. I, um, like I say, try and take it in regular. The tires are doing good. The Wild Peak, the Falcons. Actually quick update on the mileage because we've been running it um you know without towing a little bit a pretty good distance it got up to i think 19.1 with the new tires i was concerned the new tires were dragging dragging down the mileage severely and really i think maybe end of the day i've lost maybe two miles per gallon which is huge so i'm pretty happy about that um you know just the fact that you know a bigger tire now I do keep them at 75 uh, no matter what I just go to 75 matter of fact I go to 75 on all my tires both uh, for the truck and the fifth wheel and I know that 
tires on the fifth wheel, they say to put 80 in them. I just, for whatever reason, I don't really feel comfortable with that. Um, so I just, I can remember 75 and that's what I do. I do 75 all the way around and that's it. Um, and that's worked for me so far. You know, I'm not saying it's exactly perfect thing to do. I don't claim to be an expert. We're all learning here. That's yeah, kind of what the channel is about. Um, okay, so what we found out on the fifth wheel is if you um, run the uh, outside LEDs, and I accidentally left them on for like the patio and a couple others, it drains, I mean, you guys are probably laughing about this. You may know this, but it drains the battery really fast. That happened, and it got low, and the slides, the slides were barely moving. Um, oh, and we tried to retract. Even we got the slides in, but then we tried to do the auto level or you know the retracting system, and it said no, nope, low battery. So I have a battery charger, which I've done a video on. Go back and check it out, and I hooked it up. It had working before. We had a similar situation. It didn't work this time. The battery said, nope, too low. So I actually had to, luckily, we we're out in front of the house. So I had to go back on shore power. I had to go back on shore power. And that was pretty much it. It charged it back up. It's been fine ever since. Um, so moral to that story is make sure and turn the lights out uh, if you're on battery you know just do a quick double check because it drains it really quick um and the other part of that i've been telling myself is don't pull your shore power too soon because that's what i was doing we were getting ready to go on a trip and i pulled it too soon and that's what happened um so you know i'm telling myself this more than anything try and coordinate things a little better so that's that happened um, i think what i want to do is switch out to an agm battery that's what I'm hoping to do. Um, just, I feel like in a situation like that, it would have held a little longer as far as leaving some lights on. Um, and eventually I do want to get back to a solar system on the roof. That helped work great in the last unit. It always trickled down the battery. Now I'm finding I pull the battery, plug it in the garage, keep it trickled down, which works. You can get a little trickle down thing, but you're constantly pulling the battery. You know, so that's the differences. That's what we've learned. Um, again, if anybody has any other ideas, uh, you know, feel, feel free. Uh, so that's, that's been the, the kind of the major things that's been happening. And those really aren't too major. You know, when you own a fifth wheel, if you're considering it, it's kind of, if you've ever owned a boat, people know what we're saying, I'm saying, it's like, there's always something. There's always something, and just get used to there always being something that you have to basically deal with. You know, it's never going to be perfect. There's always a battery issue, a cabinet issue. Um, you know, just, just be ready for that more than anything. Don't let it stress you out. I know some people, it just, you know, it gets to the point where it's just too frustrating for them, and then it, it kind of ruins, you know, even owning one. Don't, don't go there. Just know that's how it is, and hopefully, you know, your significant other uh, is willing to kind of jump in there with you. Luckily, uh, my wife is, you know, on some things anyways, the stuff we can handle. Um, that in YouTube, I say it all the time because, you know, even, I don't know, 10 years ago where, you know, people weren't as willing to share the information. I think it would have been, I know it would have been way harder trying to either, you know, I guess you could Google it at the time, and that was helpful before YouTube really got more prevalent as far as, you know, mechanicals type stuff, uh, fix it yourself, DIY type stuff. Um, but even before that was really, really hard is all I'm trying to say. So these this day and age, it is doable. Um, that with also talking to other campers, you know, uh, reading through comments, there's, there's many, many ways that you can, um, you know, kind of get through some of these issues. Now, some of them, you know, yeah, you're going to have to go in, you're going to have to pay somebody and, you know, that whole number. Um, so it just really depends, you know, your level of 
you know, I guess mechanical ability, your level of, um, you know, just being comfortable trying to get some, some things done on your own, you know, and it is easier if you don't have to run to the dealer, you know, we've all talked about that before on this channel. It's like, especially nowadays, the dealers are, are super busy or they were a few months ago and I'm assuming, you know, RVs are still kind of flying off the shelf like they were. Um, but you know, it's really, you know, you take your truck, your vehicle in your RV in and you're, you're going to expect to wait, especially if some major, you know, probably at least 30 days. So that's 30 days without camping, you know, it just, and if it's some minor stuff that you could probably do yourself, you know, I say, give it a try, you know, full disclaimer, I'm not a mechanic, um, you know, use all cautions that's in your owner's manual or whatever you may find, you know, be super careful, especially electrical. Um, you know, like when I pull the batteries, luckily I've pulled enough. I know at least what the red and black <laughs> posts mean. You know, I do know that much. <laughs> so, um, but things like that, you know, I use that as an example and I kind of snicker about it, but it's, you know, it's stuff like that. Um, you know, other things you should have, I know I'm kind of rambling here, but is some fuses um, in case you pop one out in the campsite and you're, say you're way out in the middle of nowhere, maybe you're boondocking, um, you know, have a, Amazon I think has a, I think that's where I got mine, I have like a small box of them that has, I think some of the main ones I think might go if, you know, like 10, I think there's a 10, a 15 in there or something like that, maybe a 25, um, and they've sat in there for a while, you know, but you never know one day it may, something may go and you thankfully you have that one fuse, you know, um, I know on the Ram, I can't exactly what, remember what it was, but if you have that one fuse and again, I, can, I wish I could remember, I'll, I'll put it on the screen if I do, um, you're okay. Like you can get it back up and running even, yeah, even on the Ram, but the fuses are mostly for the RV. You know, if you don't know where your fuse box is, you should probably read your owner's manual and at least take a look at it. Um, I know at Thanksgiving, we were actually did a Thanksgiving dinner out of the RV, which was my wife, God bless her, just and my kids, they pulled it off. It was really great. Um, but we had several things running. Um, matter of fact, my mother-in-law's, it's a Wassel machine. Wassel's like a cider drink. It's pretty good. Um, but this thing, it pulls a lot of power. I don't know why. Um, but we had it, we found out that the circuits in the kitchen um, are tied up to, to, it's a really big line that can pop pretty easily. The fuse I'm talking about. kind of house looking fuse, like a black fuse, you know, that you just switch over. Thank God it wasn't one of the other ones. And it popped like three times, so we finally had to move it to, you know, a line that didn't have it, you know, have it be on the same circuit, which was kind of crazy, but we did learn something there that, um, you know, there's, there's a limit to how many you can put in the kitchen, uh, electrical sockets, that type of thing. And it's a good thing though, cause you learn more about your RV, its capabilities. Yeah. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, almost there. I know I kind of rambled about things, but you know, maybe somebody will get something out of this, you know, maybe they'll see this and realize, hey, I don't want to get an RV, <laughs> it's too much, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's really worth it, you know, I, one thing I always say, there's a lot of, when you're heading, getting ready for a trip, and maybe you're a month out, there's always the, you know, thought in your mind, oh, is this, you know, it's so much to do, we got to get you know, maybe you got to repair, you got to get some tires, tires are really important, always keep an eye on them, and then, you know, if they get too old, or if they start looking, uh, you know, worn, you know, you need to replace them, that type of thing, but maybe it's stuff like that, that just, it kind of weighs on you, and you don't even want to take the trip, I say push through it, and it's worth it once you get out there, and you're camping, um, you know, right now, we, we're, it's kind of like we still are camping, or it's all set up, you know, ready for us just to basically come back and start again. We just had some stuff to take care of, so we came back home for a little bit. Um, so it's kind of nice to be able to do that too. But 
you know, if you are considering RVing or maybe you're an old pro, you know, leave a comment. Give us some ideas, you know, the things we can do better, or, you know, locations you've gone to that are that are nice. I know Arizona is super popular right now, Quartzsite area. Everybody's heading out there for, uh, you know, just many events taking place. There's a lot of vendors. Uh, that's super popular this time of year. And maybe, maybe you know of some, too, that are popular. And uh, anyhow... Thanks everyone for watching, really appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next time.